Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined from the suburbs of Philadelphia by Jessica Jones. How are you doing, Jessica? I'm well, thanks. How are you, John? I'm um, great, thank you. And Jessica uh, runs a company called Pivot to Growth. And you started your first venture at age nine, selling bouquets of dandelions <laughs> and buttercups to willing customers. I love it. Yes. And, and then you've obviously gone on to sell millions of dollars in, in ad sales and you've helped businesses grow from startup to in excess of $15 million in sales. And, and you love working with entrepreneurs. But the subject that we wanted to talk to today about is a very interesting one, particularly as we're you know, starting to maybe come out of winter and head towards spring. If any of you are gardeners out there, you know what you do at that time. You prune everything back, you cut it all back so that it can blossom and grow in the future. However, in business, sometimes we're really bad at that. We're great at growing and adding, but we're terrible at pruning. Yeah. So, so Jessica, let's talk about that a little bit, about that whole concept of, of scaling back in order to scale up. Yes. So I look at it, I call it growth through amputation, which is difficult, right? But we, we look at our businesses, we tend to get emotional about them. They, and they do, they have a life. There's a birth, mm -hmm. there's a midlife, but there is also, um, there can be a death and, and that can be very good for the business overall. And so we can look at huge companies who've made decisions to gr to shut down in order to grow. Like I think the gap shut down recently prior to the pandemic, 175 out of their 675 stores. Um, and the key is, especially um, as I'm going through this pandemic, I've worked with several clients who really the key to them surviving and thriving has been making that difficult decision to shut down some locations. And when you've got one location that's profitable and three that aren't, sometimes you need to really shut down all three that aren't and focus on the one that is. And then that frees up your time, your energy, your revenue, your reserves so that you can regrow but you can't do it if you're spending 80 to 80 percent of your time on the thing that's not working yeah so similarly how, so how, oh, sorry you know i was going to say so how do you help people with this process because as you say uh you know it's very easy to get kind of married to your your business or your project or whatever it is you're working on and it's very hard to know when enough is enough you know when and i think a lot of people don't really comprehend the concept of sunk cost you know, it's yeah. like, it's there, it's money, it's gone, it's gone, it's never coming yes. back, it's done. So you can either invest more, or you can right. just cut your losses. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, it's when I'm when I'm talking with, when I first start working with somebody, and we're, we're looking at, well, I, I, this is my success. And, and now I'm not sure what's going on, it's not happening. And we can look and, you know, sometimes it's very simple in the numbers and they're talking about, oh, you know, well, this clinic's working, this, you know, I'm thinking of a particular mm -hmm. client who had medical clinics and they had 14 medical clinics and there was one that was gangbusters, $2 million in profits a year. And um, there were some that just were not working and all of those profits were going towards legal fees, flights to send people in to help the clinics that weren't working. It's like the money was just vanishing because they were putting all of that energy and time into the clinics that weren't working. And it took some time to get them over that hurdle of, okay, wait, I get it. If I get rid of these clinics that aren't working, I'll have this much more time because they were spending 80% of their time as is the old you know, mm -hmm. everybody knows the 80-20 rule. It's it's genuine. They were spending 80% yeah. of their time on what wasn't working. Yeah, because it's difficult, isn't it, that uh, uh, as we were talking beforehand, that sometimes, you know, people have fixed ideas in their head, like um, maybe in that case, it was, mm -hmm. I want to get, uh, I want to have 14 or 15, you know, locations, and that's my idea of success. So yes. scaling, you know, getting rid of the underperforming ones and scaling back may seem like, 
in your head may seem like a failure, but in fact, it's not. It's like ensuring long-term success. It is. It's the key to it because if you don't make that change and make that mind shift that, wait, this is how I can grow. You're, you know, the world is designed to suck you in and in your business, the things that aren't working, it's like, it's like getting stuck in a binge watching instead of focusing on what you need to get done. You're, you're focusing on that thing that isn't working and you aren't listening to your gut, which is telling you, I've put all this time, energy and revenue in, and it's still not turning around. Once you realize that it's not going to turn around and you cut back and then you're freeing up that revenue, that time, that energy to focus on other areas that are working and maybe growing them a bit, adding new revenue streams there, um, it can really turn the entire business around. Whereas if you continue on that cycle where you're putting your energy and reserves into the thing that's not working, the whole thing tumbles. Yeah. And not to mention, I mean, across your business, then, I mean, it starts to it starts to have an impact on people too, right? I mean, particularly on both sides, because if you're in a failing bit, who wants to be in a failing business? Um, and and uh, on the other side, if you're the one in the successful one and you're seeing all this time and energy being spent on the unsuccessful ones and you, are one, you have got great ideas, you want to keep going forward, it's very frustrating for those people too. 100%. Plus those people are clamoring for your attention saying, hey, yeah. hey, look, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. And you're saying, yes, it's great. And then you're like, but I need to focus here because this you guys are doing great. Yeah. If you spend all that time with the people who are making it work and they're enthusiastic, you're going to reap the rewards. But if you continue to ignore them, you're going to lose them actually is what's going to happen. So. Yeah, because it's going to be hugely, hugely, dem hugely demoralizing. Um, as I said, it's almost like you're being punished for being successful. If you want attention, maybe you should start losing money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So, so what is it? Because as I was saying to you beforehand, there's a strange thing, uh, a strange phenomenon with with human beings. It's like, um, you know, if you ever do strategic planning sessions with with senior teams or or whatever, even small businesses, it doesn't matter. Is and you say, okay, what what are we going to do next year? Like people have great ideas and they've come forward with all these great plans, and you go, okay, so in order to do that, what are we going to stop doing? Yeah. And there's silence. And everybody kind of looking down and because nobody wants to nobody even wants to stop it's great adding and it's like in your in your example here it's like i bet you adding another location is really exciting and everybody would be excited to do that but taking one away that just seems a very cycle psycho psychologically for people stopping doing things seems to be so hard sure i mean you know we get attached um you know as we were saying before i think that people look at their businesses and, and it really is a life. It's, it's a birth, it's a midlife and you become emotionally attached to that and you come emotionally attached to the things that started your business that might not be applicable anymore. Like you can start a business in one area and evolve and that, and that thing that got you started is no longer of value. You got to let it go and evolve. The other thing I see is people are in their business and they don't take a step back to look at it from the outside perspective. And when, when you don't do that, you're missing so many things that could kill you, right? You're missing, if you're only stuck in the head of your business, you might be missing mm -hmm. competition that's up and coming that's going to outpace you. You might be missing regulation changes that are going to harm you. Um, there's so many things that are key to stepping back at looking at you from the outside. And I think if you can take the time to do that, that's why I do recommend kind of getting out of the business at least once a month and getting away from it and do what, do what you do that helps you think, hike, whatever it is, and, um, think about the business from the outside perspective. And it's a, it's a huge benefit, um, for you and your, and your key team to kind of evaluate and see why you can grow by making some changes that might seem hard if you're stuck in the business day to day. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a I think that's a fantastic point because I think sometimes you know we we focus on fixing the wrong problems. All right, so to your point, like you may be really focusing on the business, trying to fix things, but outside. So here's a good one. Um, right now. 
digital transformation is happening across all industries, right? So if you're not thinking about how to leverage, um, you know, automation and digital technologies to help your business, you're going to, yeah, you could spend all your time fixing some issue over here. But then when you lift your head up again, you realize you have a legacy business. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, you know, the other thing is the, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Okay. But the other thing is, it's not just enough to look at what's happening now. You kind of have to be paying attention mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, right now, a lot of people are still focused in on Facebook Clubhouse is on the horizon. How's that going to change things? Mm -hmm. You know, there's always going to be something new coming out. And it doesn't mean you need to hop on board to that new shiny new object. I don't recommend that. Um, but I do recommend that you be aware and take the steps to be prepared to shift and pivot should something be coming that's going to change the effectiveness of something else that's key to your business. Yeah. And probably one of the one of the big challenges you have when you work with entrepreneurs is helping them figure out how to let go, not just of, of things that aren't working, but on finding people to help them and let go of doing things that perhaps they're not the best at doing, or perhaps they really don't have time to devote, you know, enough energy to. 100%. Delegation is one of the hardest learned skills, but it's so important. And another thing that I find people having trouble doing is, you know, letting go of some revenue to put towards somebody to help with those skills and realizing, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I'm going to be so much more profitable because I'm going to, even if it's time, time is valuable. You have to remember that your time, your health, your energy are your biggest asset. And so if you can let go of things that someone else can do and delegate, and that frees you up to get some energy, you're going to come up with ideas. You're going to come up with new ways to do things. And you're also going to feel like, hey, I have more control over my life. And that's really amazing. Yeah. And, and the key to doing that, and I think this is where the big challenge comes in sometimes is the key to doing that is you have to obviously find the right people and you have to trust them, but you have to be prepared for, for people to do things maybe a little bit differently than the way you would yeah. do it. Because I always think that's the hardest thing, especially yeah. if you've been doing it yourself, is to see somebody come in and do it a little differently. And, it, and the just temptation just to say, well, no, could you just do it my way? Yes. Well, there's that. And then there's also, you know, you have to let people make mistakes. People learn through mistakes. So you have to be understanding and patient and give them that freedom because yeah, they might be doing it differently, but oh my gosh, in a month, they might come up with a system that you never would have thought of. That's like 20 times better and more efficient than the way you were doing it. And so by giving people the flexibility to do it differently, you can have a magical new function in your company that you didn't even know was possible because you were clinging on to doing it your old way. Mm -hmm. Perfectionism. I mean, I, f I find yeah. it very difficult to work with anybody who doesn't have a level of perfectionism who started a business. Yeah. So, yeah. But as we know, like perfectionism obviously has its down, has its downsides too. 100%. But I think, I think, take, if, uh, I think, yeah, I think if you've got to somewhat change your mindset a little bit and, and when you do hire that person, or you do bring in somebody to help you, maybe look forward to them surprising you as, a, as opposed to, you know, waiting for them to do something that's not the way you would do it or whatever, but look forward to them surprising you with something new because that's the whole point. That's the exciting thing about hiring yes. somebody, about bringing somebody in is I that they it. do have different skills. Yeah. And so there is also a balance because you don't want to be over them so much that they don't have the flexibility to make mistakes and make decisions and thrive. Um, but you don't, you also don't want to make that mistake of just kind of like saying, okay, okay, sink or swim and not giving them the support they need. So it's, it is a balance, but it's one that's so beneficial to master because you're going to get the best out of the people working for you when you give them that kind of like, it's like being a parent. It really is. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is you have to really consider the uh, and be careful and, and define any of the jobs or roles that you're that you're hiring for that you're going to bring in. And especially, uh, you know, if there are parts of your business that are struggling, because um, here, here's an interesting one. 
way back uh, when I first came to the US, I came to Silicon Valley during the dot-com era. And, and I was headhunted at one stage and asked to go uh, to a company, a, a dot-com startup. It's, it's still around in one form or another today. But um, when I went to the interview for the job, it was a senior, it was one of the executive team. I interviewed with all the executive team. And when I came back, I met with the CEO first and the whole executive team, then back to the CEO at the end. And she asked me what I thought about the, the job. And I said, to be honest, I said, I think you have created a job that contains all the bits of everybody else's job that they don't like. And, and I said, to be honest, I think this is a, a role that's set up to fail. And, uh, and so that went down like a lead balloon, obviously. But in retrospect, and, and, and with the recruiter on the way home, she was, well, what? You just talked yourself out of it, you know? And I said, yes, absolutely. But here's the interesting thing. She talked to the company again, and they suddenly discovered, yes, that was when they reflected on it, I was correct. And they withdrew the job, and they started looking at things internally again. So my only point and they didn't, there and is, they didn't hi, and they didn't grab you up and say we need this guy as a consultant. He's yeah, brilliantly yeah, no. in one interview assessed the issue. <laughs> I know I should have. If I, in retrospect, I should have sent them an invoice. <laughs> but uh, there you go. But uh, but I just uh, my only point in bringing that up is is the fact that yeah, uh, it's good to let go of things and create the rose, but just be careful the way in which you do it and that you set it up for success and you don't, in, as in this case, is like create a, a composite kind of job that just is all the bits and, and that per, all the bits that nobody wants to do or are yeah. problematic and you're going to bring in somebody and they're just going to have a terrible time. Yeah, which is also bad for morale, right? Like if yeah. there's one person in your company who just has the energy sucked out of them every day because they're doing what makes everybody, you know, it's it's not good for the organization at all as a whole. And just 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 quickly, what is it, what is the what is the process like? I mean, when you work with an entrepreneur and then maybe you're you say to them after doing your investigation, you say to them, listen, I really think you should get rid of that location or you should get rid of that line of business or whatever it is. What's that process like? Because obviously that's a hard conversation in many ways. It is. And I'm trying to think of a time that it ever went easily and quickly, like, you're <laughs> right, I'm going to do that. It, it's never happened that way. It's always a process. And it's always kind of like, okay, let's, you know, it, it also depends on what the situation is. You know, it's mm -hmm, easy sure. when it's a revenue situation. And it's so obvious, like, look at the revenue and the profits and where it's all going and where it's not coming in. Um, it's kind of easier to get there. Sometimes it's more subtle, um, but it's kind of, you know, no different than a little bit of the conversation we're having here. It just takes a longer time to come around to it of, okay, what are, what is going to be the negative of making this mm -hmm. cut? And then let's look at what the potential positives are if we make the cut. And it's no different than just kind of looking at things from a pro and con. And when you lay it out and brainstorm and then get them involved in thinking about what can what could they be doing if they weren't spending all their time and energy on this thing that isn't working, then that's when the shift happens because then they get excited and they're like, well, wait a second, I'll have more time, I'll have more money mm -hmm. in reserves and I'll be able to do all of these other things. And then it's kind of like, okay. And then, you know, the process of closing can be challenging too, depending on sure. the industry that we're working with, like medical clinics, there's a whole system that needs to take in place to not abandon patients. But that part's easy once you make the decision to close, then it's just a system of steps to follow and yeah, start reaping the reward. Yeah, and I think this is where it's it's really important uh, when when an entrepreneur or a small business owner or whatever engages somebody like yourself because I think it's as we discussed it's so hard to see it yourself when you're down in the weeds and yeah. and maybe emotionally invested and invested in that maybe you're invested in the location maybe invested in the heavily in the people yeah. or whatever it's very yeah. very hard to detach. It is. And, you know, you mentioned people, you know, we hate to say it, but sometimes this applies to people too. You know, we're spending 80% yeah. of our time trying to get somebody to get what, what they should be doing. And, and 20% of our time is, you know, spent on the people who are working 
you know, sometimes we've got to, you know, let go to grow. And uh, yeah. it is, it is an emotional investment, but I, you know, working with people, when you, when you start to get the clarity about what the benefit can be, um, it's a hard thing to come to, but once you realize it, it's like, oh, why didn't I do that? It's the epiphany, right? Yeah. And it's the people one is the tough one, obviously, but, uh, oh, so but you, then you have to ask yourself, right? If I get a 5% improvement from my top 20% of people, what difference would that make compared to me getting a 5% improvement from the bottom 20%? Um, they're completely, they, it, it just doesn't even, uh, you know, compete. No. I, I mean, I, I literally, I literally was just working with a company who their the person re responsible, it was like a small role. It was a person responsible for their, their, their payables and vendors were cutting them off. <laughs> wow. You've been working on this for a long time. Like this is a significant cost. We've mm -hmm. got to wrap our head around making this change. And they made the change. They have a new person who's been there for one week, one week. It took one week for the new person to put in system at the same salary, same wage, put in systems, already repaired relationships with the vendors and got things back flowing. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I, I always think that uh, you have to look at things um, differently sometimes. And the fact is that if somebody is not suited to a role is is failing at that role yeah. and you give them the right opportunities and all of that. And, you you know, you've set, tried to set them up for success. You're actually not doing them any favors by leaving them in that position, because who wants yeah. to who wants to fail? Who wants to struggle yeah. at something? And clearly their skill set is better suited to something else and that's not necessarily your job to find out what that is but no. you're doing them a favor and yes it may be tough and it may be difficult and it may and it may have some short-term pain but ultimately um, that person would probably go on and find something that's better yeah. suited to them and be much happier and everybody wins in the end even if even if it's a painful experience hundred percent. And I'm glad, I'm glad you looked at it that way and pointed that out because, um, you know, when I think back, unfortunately I've had to terminate quite mm -hmm. a few people and not a single one of them. Um, I'm, I'm still in communication with every single one of them. They, when it might initially feel not great. Right. But ultimately they all are happy because nobody wants to wake up and it's, it's something we're born with, a desire to succeed. That's why we smile back when somebody smiles at us. We want, we want to feel like, okay, we're, we're doing something good. And, and it grows with us as we grow. We want to be successful. It's a, it's a basic human need. So you're right. When people are waking up in the morning and going into a job that they feel in their gut, they're not really doing the best at, it doesn't feel good and it's not good for them. And ultimately it's, it is good for them when they realize like, okay, now I can make a new new path for myself yeah absolutely and now of course we can walk around as soon as we have to wear masks we can just walk around and assume that everybody's <laughs> smiling at us and make ourselves feel good <laughs> that's right that's right i i look for the i look for the crinkles here in the corner of the eyes right <laughs> yeah that's just the uh <clears throat> that's just your eyes watering from uh, having the mask on but that's okay whatever works <laughs> um listen jessica this was great uh all of Jessica's information is going to be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. I am, as, as John said, Jessica Jones. My company is Pivot to Growth, and I work one-on-one -on -one with CEOs and entrepreneurs and uh, executives to help them take back control of their business and in doing so gain better control of their life, better balance, um, better success across the board. and. Excellent. And like I said earlier, I, I highly encourage you to, if you're an entrepreneur or whatever, check out uh, Jessica's website, Pivot to Growth. And I do always recommend that it, it, you really should uh, look for outside people to give you some uh, a perspective and to help you find perspective. It, it's so, so valuable. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.